Welcome back to this week in Mythic Plus, and this week we are going to be rotating down to the Zalatath's Bargain Ascendant Affix. We're back to the Razgat the Orbs that give haste, and we've had some major shakeups with what's actually been going on with Mythic Plus in this most recent week. We have Gilded Crest changes, we have Dungeon nerfs, we have World First plus 15 being timed, we have game-breaking exploits that have been fixed inside of Mythic Plus dungeons, and much, much more to be talking about this week. Um, so first and foremost, you know, just for every key that is below a 12, Zalatath's Bargain Ascendant is going to be available. This is the CC affix set, where you end up having to press any CC, and you end up getting haste. This affix is probably the best feeling affix, personally, for me. Um, but in general, you know, this this should be a pretty good week for you to be able to start to get your 10s done. In addition, that Gilded Crests are now available from plus eight keystones. This isn't like a huge change, all things considered, although I think that Blizzard farmed a bunch of Ws with this change. I think that uh, in general, moving the line from Gilded Crest starting at plus eight or from plus nine to plus eight, it does change a little bit, it, but it's not the end of the world. I think fundamentally the dungeons are still just a little bit too hard for players. And I've seen a lot of comments talking about players being locked and not able to actually progress through the keystone system very easily or uh, as frictionless as it has been in the past. Now, I will say, I think part of this is due to the fact that players are getting just too much gear from delves. And so they are just like kind of skipping the line in terms of being able to progress the hero track gear. But that doesn't mean that, you know, they should be like completely locked down once they reach that plus seven level and really struggle to even be able to do a 10 altogether. Uh, but I will say, you know, moving crest to a plus eight, this isn't even a bad thing. This is a good thing, all things considered. And uh, hopefully it will allow players to be able to craft more of their gear and get that hero track gear all the way maxed out at 626 item level, I think, is when it ends uh, from 619 previously. Which these things are good. No, no complaints overall. In other news, we have Nearbar Palace Raid and Mythic Plus Dungeon Hotfixes Web Pull Exploit Fixed. Uh, basically, there was this item that was called Web Pull, and it was a PvP item, and you were able to pull any mob, any boss, including in dungeons or raid, anything that was possible to be you know, targeted with this item. It could be pulled, and it could do things such as positively bug out and uh, completely cancel mechanics on bosses, Alternatively, it could wipe you like I saw from this group where they use it to pull the boss because they're just messing around trying to see exactly what it does. And on Hadal, it summoned three of these uh, water surges or four even of these uh, waves of the breakwater and they end up wiping their entire group. Now, this is something that got fixed. Uh, I did see some players use it on some Mythic Plus bosses. Uh, I didn't see anybody to like actually abuse it for like a, a super high level key a really dumb thing to be doing i wouldn't be shocked i saw somebody ended up killing silken court with this where the boss actually ended up doing zero damage to them the entire time i wouldn't be shocked if uh people who are exploiting like that end up getting banned in some capacity but you know you never really know what blizzard's actually going to do with stuff like that um in other news so we talked about the Gilded Crests. We are going to have some changes to the dungeons themselves. First and foremost, these things are already live, but there are affix changes. So these Zalatath's Bargain affixes have been increased from 20 seconds to 30 seconds. So you're going to get 30 seconds of this 20% this haste gain from the Ascendant buff. That's sick. Huge, huge ups uh, to Wizard for that. It ends up basically soft nerfing all of the dungeons just straight across the board below a 12 and i think that this is something that's pretty positive for most of the players that are involved here the other change is altat's guile now increases enemy health and damage by 10 percent was previously 20. we basically the consequence of this were that we saw everybody who was stuck at like a, that 11 to 12 range and they were kind of progging 12s they were able to finally break through that barrier and were able to get a decent amount of 12s timed um you know we were even starting to see people be able to push like you know if they were doing 13s now they're doing 14s it ended up being about a key level of advantage from just the nerf on this guile and now the jump for the 11 to 12 feels a lot more manageable not that it's not steep but it's a lot less steep than it has been in the past and i think that this feels at least as a player a lot more fair uh to whenever you're looking to actually do these guiles because in the past 12s were pretty much off the table 
Dungeon Tuning. We have Necrotic Wake Tuning. Surgeon Stitch Flesh Health reduced by 20%, and the Stitch Flesh Creation Festering Rot Damage reduced by 30%. This is a massive damage nerf, or a health nerf, sorry. A 20% dam uh, health nerf is not something that you see all too often. It comes off the back of also the effects of Bloody Javelins don't stack. Now, for groups that were bloodlusting and using Triple Spear, this might end up being a very marginal buff to Surgeon Stitch Flesh. But for most, I'm saying 98% of the player base that weren't Triple Javelining him, they were not saving Lust. Say you wiped or something like that. This is just a 20% health nerf mostly for most groups. Um, the Now you're only going to be able to end up using one Javelin on Surgeon Stitch Flesh. Realistically, this is a good change because now it op opens up the options for actually using these javelins at different points as opposed to being completely locked down to only use them on surgeon stitch flush personally i'm worried about my ability to be able to kill this boss off because it's kind of impossible to kill the stitch flush's creations they just have far too much hp a 30 percent festering rot damage reduction just isn't really enough to be able to uh heal through two or three of them up at once it, this kind of a fight that is really bad in my opinion. Addition to that, if you have multiple creations up at once, they'll hook one another and you can no longer progress the fight. This is a fight that is not doable the way that Blizzard wants it done and I think it honestly should be looking to get a rework. Other stuff for Necrotic Wake. Zolramus Gatekeepers, Wrath of Zolramus, Periodic Damage Reduced by 25%, great change. Skeletal Monstrosity, Enemy Forces, Contributions Increased by 20%, great change. Skarmorak, Health has been reduced by 10%. He's now stunned for 4 seconds, was previously 2. And the AoE from the Crystal Shards is now reduced by 15% in the Stone Vault Dungeon. And I think that Skarmorak is a boss that is incredibly annoying for both high-end players and pugs i think that this fight is just not very intuitive for how it works i saw a post at the front page of reddit that was like make sure to soak the, the orbs on skarmorak because people are just don't intuitively understand how this fight works there's also voice speaker iric you're getting a little bit nerfs on that boss as well let's talk about what we've seen after the changes to the guile so we saw World First 15s being done. Uh, there was a group out of China. It wasn't the Anua group. It was this Zan Lin group. They were able to time the World First 15 and ended up being Mist of Tyr and Scythe. There was the Anua, gr Anua group who ended up timing a 15 Arakara. I want to say about 25 minutes after. And so we're seeing a lot more of these 15s being timed. Right now we're seeing the... The cap of the dungeons being about this 15, but we're seeing a decent amount of 15s actually starting to show up on the leaderboard. We have about 36 of those being in time. Now, most of them end up being like Arakara, Mist of Tear and Scythe, but you're now you're even seeing some as Dawn in Dawnbreaker, you're seeing some in Necrotic Wake, you see some in Grim Batol. I see a city of threads here. So we're seeing most of the dungeons being timed in the uh on the 15 range on the highest keys because of this guile nerf so 15 seems to be the soft cap right now i wouldn't be shocked if we we're having this video next week and we start talking about the 16s that are being done because that's actually kind of interesting so kudos to them for being able to actually time world first uh 15 and i'm kind of interested to see how the meta progresses because like look at the front page we're starting to see some comps that don't involve an aug evoker you know there's this kira team that's playing uh major dk and then balanced root assassination rogue could be pretty good. I have a suspicion that, you know, Aug is still going to be overwhelmingly brought and preferred, especially at, like, super high key levels just because of the tank survivability that it ends up providing. But seeing that there is a team that is willing to play without an Aug Evoker and they're doing exceptionally well, that's pretty positive. Um, all right, let's take a look at WoW meta.com and kind of look at what they are showing here so for their dungeon ease uh basically from the plus eight to the plus 14 range it has mists and arakara as the easiest dungeons and then basically everything else is pretty hard with necrotic wake and stone vault being the absolute hardest i think that anecdotally this feels about right for whenever you're pugging mists is like the the white whale key that's the one that if you get it any time to nine and you end up getting a 10 and it ends up being a mists you're able to get all of these high-end players, these 3k IO players signing up to your group that are 635 item level or whatever, and you're able to get that key easily done. Whereas, you know, if you get something like Stone Vault, nobody's signing up to that key. It's going to be nuclear hard, and you're going to end up having to drop it, and you're going to have to re-roll your key at some point. But uh, I think that now we're kind of seeing things start to 
shape up or shake up it, about how I feel about them as well. I think that I'm glad that they're nerfing and targeting nerfs to Necrotic Wake and Stone Vault because I do tend to agree that those are the hardest keys so far this season. Most of the Stone Vault stuff is funnily enough not necessarily just Skarmorak, although Skarmorak is hard. It's more just like the coordination that's required for some for all of the bosses is just a lot higher than a lot of the other dungeons. Um Looking at some of the tier list stuff that they have, it's data-based analytics uh, based off of like players that are timing keys between the 8 and the 14 range. This has Guardian Druid, then Prot Warrior, then Blood Decay. I tend to think that Prot Warrior is a little bit of a better tank than Guardian Druid just generally. If I had to rank them, I'd go Prot Warrior, then Guardian Druid. But funnily enough, we've actually seen some people start to play this Protection Paladin. I wonder if this is going to be like how this is going to fare once we are seeing like the rework that happens on the anniversary patch next reset, how much prop paladin representation and, and honestly just the strength of the spec is going to spike. Like we've seen Drogo time of 15 on his prop pally and prop pally is a specialization that, you know, look at looking at this, you know, it's, it's in D tier in theory because of that's the representation, but we are seeing that highly skilled players of any specialization can make it happen uh, if given enough time. And I'm kind of interested in seeing if prop, like how much prop pally is going to rise. Prop pally has generally been seen as like the worst tank due to the fact that they just get white swung to death. And this is a season where white swings are just incredibly potent. And so that's something that people have been kind of steering away from. Um, for melee DPS, Frosty K and Assassination Rogue are at the very top. I think that Enhancement Shaman probably should also be at the top here. I think Enhancement Shaman has its fair share of representation. Just in general, fewer players are playing it. Unholy DK in some spots has actually been even better than Frost. I think for Arakara specifically, Unholy Death Knight could be the better choice. Same for probably like Necrotic Wake. I think that if you're going to play Unholy over Frost, it's probably going to be for those two dungeons specifically. And then I think Enhancement Shaman should probably be up here in S. The rest of this kind of makes sense, though. For range DPS, we have Augmentation Evoker, Balance Druid, and Elemental Shaman in S. I think that we should move one of the mages up. We've actually seen a lot of different mage specializations being played, whether it be Frost, whether it be Arcane. Both of those are probably the most dominant one, but the reason that it's being held down is because players are swapping or they're not consistent with the spec that they're playing, and so it's not in the S tier, but it realistically should. I think that there's a lot of good range DPS options, and I think that Ellie's actually going to get a lot stronger on the anniversary patch. Same with Enhancement Shaman. I think both of those specs have a lot of upside for the anniversary patch, so be watching out for that. And then for healers, it's basically Disc Priest or Resto Shaman. Um, Resto Shaman is obviously the most dominant and easiest to play with healer. I actually think that Prez Evoker is, is incredibly underrated in this regard. I think that Prez is very strong. It's just not something that you're seeing too popular. Whenever you look at 12 and up with the Zalatat Skylaf fix, 78% of runs consist with a Resto Shaman. And so that is definitely becoming very dominant in the metagame where if you look at you know tanks it's pro warriors and then it's guardian druids and then it's blood decays in that order and if you look at dps it's kind of you got a lot of frosty decays. i think that frosty decay is like the big winner of the season but you're seeing a lot of aug evokers as well and rep paladin's also sneaky pretty good but yeah that's it uh, that's all we've seen in this week in Mythic Plus. I hope to see you guys next week. I'm kind of interested in seeing what's going to go on with the anniversary patch. Uh, we're going to get some class tuning as well. Again, be looking out for those shamans. I think that Enhance and Elemental are going to end up being a lot better than they were. I think that Prop Pally is going to be completely sick. So all three of those specs reasonably could be busted. But anyways, we'll be back in next week's video, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.